so it's been a while since we did an app video and we're gonna change that today like always the apps are new and do something unique out of the box like locking your usb with your phone or running linux on your android without root and even using your android as a secondary monitor so this is Pratik from techvisor.com and let's get to the first app Windows 10 Pro Edition, you get BitLocker, which lets you password encrypt your partitions and USB sticks. But here, we have an Android app called USB Locket, which functions on similar lines. It uses AES-256 to password encrypt your USB sticks and even hard drive. Let me show you how. Install the USB Locket app and connect your USB stick. You should get a similar pop-up from the app. Just tap on OK and set up a pin. And that's it. Now the USB stick is locked and cannot be accessed on any of the operating system including Windows, Mac OS, Chromebook, etc. The app encrypts all the files, locks the USB stick and you cannot read or write to it. USB Locket also has a Windows app and for some weird reason it's still in Chinese but anyways you can figure out the interface. The app does the same task and you can lock your USB drive on Windows and then unlock it on your Android phone and vice versa. Since the password is present on the USB stick itself, you can use any device with the USB Locket app to unlock the USB drive. The only caveat though is FAT32. Since USB Locket is a cross-platform utility, it had to be content with the FAT32 file system. And as you know, FAT32 has limitations with maximum file size at 4 GB and maximum partition size at 2 TB. So if you have a 4 TB hard drive like this, things won't work. Now short disclaimer, we tried USB Locket on Pixel 3 running Android 10 and it often misbehaved, so not recommended on Android 10. Anyways, moving on. Next up we have Android Nix, which lets you host Linux system right here on your Android. Let me show you how good is that. Now it lets you configure Ubuntu, Arch, Manjaro, Parrot, Kali Linux, most of the popular Linux systems on your Android device. The installation is an extremely long process and pretty much self-explanatory. You just have to copy and paste the commands in Termux. So let's just skip this part and get to the interesting stuff. Post the setup, start the VNC server on your Android and you can access the Linux system running on your Android through your Windows PC. Yes, you can access it from any other computer via VNC. And since it's VNC and not putty, you get a fully functional UI right there. That's it. You don't have to format, root or partition your Android device. You have a Linux system right there. The setup is mostly automated and seamless. It can come in handy for last minute Linux practical studies. If you're an avid Reddit user like I am, you'll love this app. So Glance is a hybrid of Reddit and Instagram. I mean, the looks and feel is based on Instagram, but instead of pictures of your wanderlust and gastronome friends, you get Reddit images. By default, the app shows you the front page of Reddit, but of course, you can log in to see the images from your feed. There is also dark mode and not so suitable for work filter is disabled by default. As you can see here, the app shows you images. If you long press on the images, you can read the title of the post. Other than that, you can upvote or go to the Reddit app to read and comment. And of course, you can search a subreddit and browse all content, including the videos. I really like the app. Also, Microsoft has been pretty active with their Android apps like Your Phone, To Do, the all-in-one Microsoft Office app. But the one that attracted us the most is Edge Chromium and Your Phone. Foremost, I love the Your Phone app because finally it's working. You can receive calls seamlessly on your Windows laptop and even make calls right here from your Windows. This feature was present on the Apple ecosystem since ages and I was really envious of it. You also get Android notifications as well as messages and photo sync. Next up is Edge Chromium. It's been in beta for ages and now we have the final stable build. To be fair, all of the internal ad blocking and tracking prevention that you get with Edge Chromium has been present in Brave Browser as well. But here's what I liked about Edge. As of now, it can only sync settings and passwords between your Android and PC, but soon it will be able to sync your history and even open tabs, which I'm waiting for the most. It's somewhat like Safari in iOS and Mac. You start reading an article on iPhone and then you can continue the same article on your MacBook. 
When Apple released Sidecar for macOS, Duet Display moved from being iOS only to Android and Windows. In case you are unaware of both, Duet Display is an app which lets you use your Android or iPad as a secondary monitor for your computer. In our case, Chromebook or Android as a secondary display for your Windows PC. However, the app is paid and you would have to shell out some 850 bucks. That's huge, but Duet Display is kind of unique. So if you have a bigger display like this Chromebook, you can even extend your screen and preview your 1080p video editing on a full HD screen instead of a 720p. Duet Display recognizes the resolution of the extended device and adapts accordingly. I'm using a Chromebook and the app extended the resolution to 1080, whereas the native resolution of my computer is 1366 by 768. So you might have heard of deepfakes and it's quite tedious to make one but just in case you want to make deepfakes to share in whatsapp group or instagram stories here is an app called doublecat it uses your selfies or in that case even someone else's photos like let me show you kaushal is a huge star wars fan so let's create a star wars deepfake of him let me take his photo and now search for a star wars gif and tap on it and then tap on reface it processes for some time and then boom you are done it obviously isn't that perfect, but you have to choose a GIF which closely resembles the face and you'll get better results. The founder says a new video version of the app is coming soon, which is something we'll have to see as deepfakes doesn't seem to have a good reputation as of now. Either way, in case you're worried about privacy, Duplicate stores your GIF photos for no more than 24 hours and face recognition data for 30 days. And by the way, the app uses Reface AI to swap out your face in a GIF and was previously used in a face swapping app called Reflect, once used by Elon Musk. And to end this, here's a quick little utility called Gesture Plus. This app lets you add customizations to the navbar. By default, it enables the black option when you hit the navbar, but I customize it to launch Spotify because that's the app I use more often. And here's a cool little trick. I've used motor phones and I love the chop chop gesture. So I've customized the lock screen navbar to toggle the flashlight, which comes in handy like every single day. So there you go. These were some of my new favorite Android apps and let me know yours in the comments below. And on that note, this is Pratik signing off. See you soon.